Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of Mouth Dancing with your host, Young. Today, I wanted to talk about double standards that really, really grind my gears. You guys know what I'm talking about, I think. There are so many of them, it's kind of crazy. I think it would be impossible to list all of them because they're just so numerous. There's probably like, for every regular standard, there's probably like a hundred double standards, right? But I'm just going to talk about one of them that um, it's really been bothering me lately. You know how it's cool to have like a big butt? Or just lots of things people think are really cool if they're big, right? Like having a big penis or having a big ego or having a big car or having, you know, a big brain, having a big bank account. People always say bigger is better, right? But then they don't say that about having a big stomach, usually. If you have a big gut, people are like, I don't know, it's generally not looked at in a very positive light. Like, you know, you get, it's called a beer gut, you know, pot belly, tiger belly, uh, you know, just dad bod, fat person. So there's all this stuff that's really good if it's big, right? There's like so many things that people are always like, yeah, that's better when it's bigger. Having a big plate of food, you know, is better than having a tiny plate of food. But, but having a big belly is not. Which makes people have to, you know, be healthy, diet, exercise, you know, eat certain foods, avoid certain foods. Because they don't want to get that big gut, right? Because people will say, oh, that guy's got a huge belly. He's probably not very healthy. You know, he's probably lazy or something. I don't know. There's all these negative stereotypes associated with it, right? I think that's really unfair. And it's just a major double standard that really needs to be addressed in our society. Yeah, I just wanted to draw awareness to that. Because it's something that's really unjust and unfair. And it's gone on long enough, I think. I mean... It's probably been going on for decades, if not centuries, right? I don't know how long this this view of big bellies has been of seeing them as a bad thing. I think it's been going on for a long time, though. Probably since at least medieval times, you know? Like, you probably couldn't put on, like, your armor if you had too big of a belly. And you probably had to become, like, a monk or something, right? I think monks a lot of times had big bellies because they would just sit around in the church like praying and stuff and making cheese and beer. They probably didn't exercise that much. I don't know, except when they were like gardening or something. So they probably had pretty big guts, I'm guessing. And maybe that's when it started this whole big stomachs are bad thing, right? But then, oh, big butts are cool for some some reason. I don't know why it's okay to have a big butt, but not a big stomach. Anyway, I also wanted to discuss um, this concept of, you know, when you, when there's like an emergency situation, you save all the women, the children, and the old people first, right? I think that's based on the idea, though, that like, well, women, I I kind of agree with that one because they're the ones who are going to continue the species, right? If you have no women, there's no babies, and the human species dies out. But, but like, children and old people, I don't agree with that. Because I don't think that they're that special, like, People idealize them, I think, in society that's like, oh, like little children are angels and old people are just these cute, innocent, you know, creatures. It's not true. And let me tell you why. Like, a young kid could be a little psychopath for all you know, you know? 
He could be out there like killing animals with his bare hands and like laughing at it. Like torturing, you know, animals or beating his siblings, you know, when no one's looking. Or he could grow up to be a complete fucking asshole. Might be cute now, but, you know, that's where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer came from. He started out as a child. And, you know, Ted Bundy, the Green River Killer, Ed Gein, John Wayne Gacy, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. They were all children once, but they turned out to be absolute monsters. So I don't really, you know, I'm not on board with this where idealizing children thing, you know. And old people, okay. Let's talk about old people now. They're just seen as being sort of like innocent and wise, full of, you know, knowledge. They uh, pass down to us from their experience. And they're just seen as like, innocent and harmless like oh everybody loves their grandma and grandpa right but you know grandma and grandpa could have been real fuck faces when they were younger you know grandma could have been a real fucking karen when she was in her 20s to like middle age she could still be a karen now even you just wouldn't know it because she doesn't always show that side of herself a lot of people are really good at hiding that kind of stuff and just letting it out at certain times and they're not going to get caught for it. And, uh, you know, lovable grandpa. He could have been a real asshole, too, when he was in his prime. Who knows, he could be a freaking murderer. You know, uh, the Golden State Killer. That guy has kids, and he was like an old man now, and he was loved by his family. They saw him as, like, this great patriarch, you know? So that's why I don't... I'm not on board with this. I don't, I don't idealize young children or old people. They're not any different from the rest of us, except they're just in a different stage of life. I know that sounds pretty dark and cynical, but that's just human nature, baby. Can't change it. That's just the way it works. It's just the way people are. Humans, you know, we call ourselves humans. As if we're different from other animals, but we're not. We're just animals too. We're a type of animal and we're just as vicious and cunning and underhanded and violent and selfish and evil as any other animal. You know, we have our good side as well, but every person, you know, for every good aspect, for every good person, there's an evil aspect or an evil person. It's just the way it is. It's the yin and the yang and the heaven and the hell and the light and the dark and the good and the evil. The angels and devils, you know. Good guys and villains. Heroes and bad guys. Do you ever buy artisanal breads? Or just like artisanal any kind of food in general? A lot of times it's really irregular, right? Like you get an artisanal loaf of bread and it'll be sometimes kind of like weirdly shaped. It'll be like just like a weird blob or something. Like how come they can't make them more like geometrically shaped? Like have some sort of like angles to them like a square or a triangle or maybe even a polygon like a like an octagon or a, a pentagon. Not the pentagon in Washington DC because... That's where they do all the evil military stuff, but like just a general five-sided shape or mm, octagon. Did I already say octagon? Yeah, octagonal. That would be nice too. But a lot of times you get it and it's like just a weird, I don't know, nondescript shape almost. Like you just have to say it's bread. It's kind of a blob of baked, you know, dough. And for one thing, it's it's really hard to describe the shape of it. That's a, a real downside of it. Two, it's hard to fit into s spaces, you know? 
like if, if something's a square, you could fit other things around it, and it's easy to store, right? And cutting it is kind of weird too, because sometimes like the ends of it are really small. So you want a slice of toast, right? And then you have an artisanal loaf of bread and cut the end off and it's just like this little tiny like one inch piece of bread. But then when you get to the middle that's like huge, how can you make a sandwich out of that? I guess you could make like really tiny sandwiches from the ends of the bread and then make bigger ones as you get to the middle. That's kind of inconvenient though. I think artisanal is just an excuse to be like a lazy baker. You don't want to put in the time to make a, a proper loaf of bread that's well shaped, you know? I think these artisanal people just... It seems like they just throw dough in the oven and then hope for the best. And then they sell it like at really high prices too because it's handmade, homemade, it's organic. It's artisanal, sourced from the best ingredients on planet Earth or whatever. It's just bullshit marketing, basically. So we need to hold them to a higher standard is what I'm saying. These artisans, quote unquote. Put that in quotes. Artisan. Artisanal. I'm doing the quotes thing that, you know, white people like to do. The scare quotes. But they're too the middle and ring finger and they go you know artisanal and they draw little quotes in the air that's what I'm doing right now same thing happens with artisanal vegetables if you haven't noticed like the tomatoes will be all different sizes and colors and you're like you want me to make a dish out of this it's gonna look weird it's gonna be like purple tomatoes and then yellow ones and then red ones and then orange ones and all the Slices are going to be different shapes and sizes. I guess if you make like a tomato sauce, it's not a big deal because it's just going to get all blended together. But let's say you're making a caprese salad. And then your tomato chunks or slices look all weird and irregular. You want me to present that to guests in my home? Because it's artisanal? I don't think so. Let's work on that, artisans. I'm saying this because I love you and I want you to improve your craft. I'm not... It's constructive criticism. I don't want to just, you know, insult you. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm just saying put a little more effort into what you're doing. I like artisanship as much as anyone else. And I appreciate the work that goes into it and the thought. But it's not an excuse to be a lazy idiot you know, and make weird bread and vegetables. Anyway, on that note, let's end this. Thank you for tuning in once again, and I'll see you next week. Bye.